We're on. We're on. All We're right. On. Can you see everything okay? Yep. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Deborah with Flourish Home, and we are back for another episode of Ask Flourish for Tip Tuesday. And the question that came in this week was about painting leather. And yes, you can paint leather with our Jolie paint. Um, it's wonderful. Um, you can see the chair that I have here. And I'm going to flip up what it used to look like. Can you see that, Heidi? Yeah. It's awful. The brown. It's really ugly brown. Mm -hmm. It was a horrible looking chair. And we painted a base of gentleman's blue on here. And then I did a technique on top with our classic navy to make it look like a true aged leather. So it's got a little bit of texture, um, a lot more depth, and you probably can't see how gorgeous it is on the film as you can in person. So you just have to come into the shop and see. But I'm going to show you this technique, and there's a couple different ways of doing this. Um, one way is called a frottage technique, and then another way is um, kind of an older term called ragging off, and it doesn't sound very good, so I'm just going to show you what they both look like, and then you can decide which way you want to do it. Um, if you pop on, if you wouldn't mind giving me like a little thumbs up or a heart and say hello, that way we know that everything looks okay, we would really appreciate it. So I've got a couple of boards here um, that are painted palace white. And move this over and do one at a time here. And the first technique I'll show you is the frottage technique. So I have, um, I'm doing a little bit higher contrast than like my personal preferences, but you certainly can do a higher contrast. I wanna try to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. Um, and I'm using our color that is called sage and that's her paint and then just some water. So my technique is much like how I teach doing a paint wash. And I'm gonna take the surface of, if this was leather, you can do this on walls, you can do this on other furniture too, but one of my favorite places to do it is the leather because it really gives you that true authentic um, aged leather look. So I am painting the surface with just some water. And now I'm gonna go in with my sage paint. And I'm making this wash. And yes, you can just thin down your paint if you want to, but I never know how much water to add until I really put it on my surface. And this way I don't mix too much and I can really get the color depth that I'm looking for. So I want actually a little bit more color than what I have going on here. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more paint. That yeah, looks better. So now I'm fairly even on here. And for our frottage technique, you can use something like tissue paper. And no, it doesn't have to be like this pretty fancy tissue, it's just what we had. Um, or you can use uh, newspaper. Newspaper works great. You want something that's thin and absorbent because that works best. I like to crinkle my piece a little bit first because it gives you more of those cool wrinkles down in the surface that you really want to achieve. And then I'm gonna lay it on my surface. And I'm gonna smooth it out. And I'm gonna do my other piece. So if you're doing a large piece, you're always gonna need more than one piece of paper. So I can make this look really easy, which a lot of videos and books and instructors do when they put one piece of tissue on here and they put it on there like look it's easy it's perfect and then you go to do it on a large surface where you need multiple pieces and you wonder why yours doesn't look as good so i'm going to show you the reality of using these pieces of paper by showing you two pieces even though i could cover it in one I cover all this. so i purposely want some wrinkles and things in here because that is the look that I want. So now I peel it off, and I peel it off, and there is my frottage technique. So it really does what it wants to do. You don't have a lot of control with how it turns out. Um, it's going to, you're gonna, you know, see a little bit of a line here. Um, you know, the larger the pieces of paper that you have, or, um, you know, 
the larger surface, I should say, the more you're going to be able to see those lines. You always want to use the largest piece possible so you see the least amount of lines on there. Um, but you'll always see a little bit of that. So I like doing this technique when I don't care so much how it turns out. Maybe I'm going to be layering a couple different colors, like letting this dry and then doing another technique on top. Um, but I'm going to show you the way that I like to do it because I'm a little fussier and I like to know how my piece is going to turn out. And I like to be able to kind of play with it. Set that here. So this way, again, I'm going to wet my surface. And I've already got some paint on my brush. So I'm automatically going to have a little bit of that wash on here. That's okay. too light for what I'm going for. Spread that out so I'm somewhat even. Got fairly even color across there now. So this is kind of like my glaze. And I love using this paint for um, this technique because back in my faux finish days, I used to do this technique with a glaze very, very hard to manipulate because it would start to dry and then it would come off too much in some areas and not enough in others and it was very hard to work quickly enough. The humidity would play um, a terrible role in putting a kink into things. If the air conditioner was running on one spot, it would be bone dry before you could get to it. Very, very hard to work with. This makes it so easy because you can reactivate this paint um, that's all watered down and really be able to control it. So I've got a slightly damp rag here. It's very, very damp. I wrung it out a lot because I want just it to be fairly damp. I don't want it to be wet because I'm not trying to add moisture to it, but I prefer to not use a dry towel either because as you work with it, if you start with a dry towel, it's going to get wet over time. So you're going to get a different look on different places of your piece. So I like to take a nice rag like this. These are better than cheesecloth towels and kind of fold it in on itself and get some wrinkles on here. You kind of see what that looks like there. And now I'm going to kind of go over my surface here. Like it's already starting to dry because I've been talking so much. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more water because it's not coming off the way I want it to. So you can fix it. It's awesome. Could not do this if it were glazed. You would be done for. Take that. There we go. See how it's coming off nice? And I can wipe it off like that. If you look at it and go, oh, now it's too much. All right, so what? Now you can just do it again. Put a little bit more paint on, a little more water, and do it again. You've got time. You cannot make a mistake. It's so forgiving, it's so wonderful. You don't have to be stressed out doing this technique. You really can get it exactly how you want it. So then I'm going to go a little bit lighter this time and not rag it off so hard. Switch my towel around a little bit because I don't want it to be the same exact texture everywhere. And now kind of bounce it around. You'll see I'm not going like in a row because I don't want it to be even and perfect on here. I want it to be very organic and natural looking. So now I'm kind of bouncing around this way. And I'm going to move it this way. Now I have all of this cool kind of crinkly texture that's on there. And when you do the two colors close together, um, it really, especially that way, gives it that old time-worn leather look. Um, this is very cool on walls. Um, you could do it in panels to make it a little bit more manageable. Very cool as a surface on, let's say, a dresser or a nightstand. and. If you do something like that, like if this is my dresser top, I would finish the edges the same way, and then you can get little nail heads and you know put them in much like they are on the chair. Leave them brass or silver. You can paint over them, um, you know, and it really gives it that very authentic leather look when you do that. So let me know what you guys think of our leather technique today. 
Um, pop your questions down below or you can DM me um, for what we want to do next week. Ivy had to go uh, tend to a customer, so I'm just going to walk around to shut it off today. We'll see you guys next week. Again, I'm Deborah with Flourish. Good to see you. See you next week. Bye.